you so much. Uh, I thank you for our, our time here, Father. I thank you for Glenn's messages. Uh, nothing you just, when you hear Glenn, you just uh, understand very quickly how much he loves the Bible. Uh, that doesn't come ringing, you know, clearly uh, through his talks. Uh, we must be dead and do that. Thank you for a man who loves the Word. Uh, Father, help me uh, not just read my Bible every day, but to love the Word of God, to live the Word of God, and really uh, transform my life through that. Uh, Father, thanks for Carl's uh, passion for truth. Uh, that just comes loud and clear. Carl hates deception. And if there's one thing happening in 2014, it's deception in all which directions at us. We must know that deception is the, from the great deceiver himself. So uh, uh, thank you for the truth that he shares through that. And Father, God, take uh, a little bit more here, some teachings, a little question and answer time uh, to get us better equipped uh, to, to talk with people and be those conversationalists and plant seeds in people's lives. So uh, we just thank you for it. And, uh, Father, just keep us humble, keep us simple, but keep us obedient to your scriptures. I think that's probably the key of all of this. So we thank you for it. We do. We ask you the great name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, I was just talking with uh, a couple workers here, and they had both gone to Teen Challenge. You heard of Teen Challenge before? Yeah. Yeah, and they had both gone to Teen Challenge. Uh, one was saved before Teen Challenge, went in very wrong direction, but one of the workers had got saved at Teen Challenge. The work here at the hotel, okay? And one thing I just reminded them of is that, you know, once you get saved, uh, you don't have to grab, matter of fact, you don't grab the plow and look what? Back. We're, we're, don't worry about it. That's all gone right under the blood of Christ. I go this way, okay? And just chat with a couple workers here. And so thank God for Christian programs that really do teach Jesus Christ, right? You know, some of the stuff in the name of Christ, you're talking about world vision. And world vision just went to the pro gay marriage route and all that stuff in Washington. Sad, sad. I, there are more Christian ministries out there that would rather build uh, a water well in your community in Africa than share the gospel of Jesus Christ in that community, okay? That's not biblical. Why would I give you physical water but not give you spiritual water forever and ever? That's not, if, matter of fact, if you only get to do one of those two, only one of those matters, and which one? The gospel of the Spirit's water. Because matter of fact, when you read John 4, uh, the woman at the well, do you ever see Jesus getting the water for the woman at the well? It never says he, he oh, let me grab your bucket there and give it for you. It never says he did that. He may have, but it never says that. Because the, he is the water. He is the spiritual life. I mean, that is more important than actually getting the physical water. Does that make sense? A lot of ministries in the end of days are coming very bushy. That's one of them as well. And what happened is they came out pro-gay marriage because they're in the state of Washington that passed um, homosexual marriage up there, okay? So they came out pro-gay marriage. They had so many emails, so many phone calls, and so many people said, I will never give you another what? Dollar dime because of this decision. They changed their position in 24 hours. Oops, that tells me something. Okay? You're looking for the praises of men and not the praise of God. Because if this was the right biblical decision, you said, oh, well, so what? If you don't want to give, we actually don't care because this is the biblical decision that two men can get married and two women can get married. No, they changed it in 24 hours. That shows you how really strong they were wishing washing, okay? And what they should have done is they should have fired the entire board of that ministry. Because the board okayed it. Okay? The board okayed it. And, and so they changed the well, okay, we're going to go back to what it was before. No, no, no. All of you men on the board, and there were secular people on the board, you do not have a Christian ministry with secular people on the board of your ministry. That's insane. That's insane. Because you'll start venturing that direction. That's what happened. They should have fired every board member and said, we made a grave error because we walked away from God's holy word. Okay, and we're, we're repenting of this publicly. So they said, no, they're worried about how they look on CNN sometimes. Okay, instead of how they look in God's eyes. I just got an email from uh, Canada. Do we have some Canadians here? We got a bunch. Of, uh, yeah, we got half a Canada's here. And uh, right over here. And uh, I just got this, this, this mom emailed me, and her son's a Canadian soldier, and he is on fire for Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, he read, I think it was one book, One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven, he wrote his email me a couple times, so I remember this name. I sent him a bunch of material to give out. And his mom just emailed me, he's been asked by the military to stop sharing his faith in New Brunswick. So the Canadian military has told this soldier, you cannot share your faith anymore in New Brunswick. 
And that's why the car was done just yesterday and stuff like that. Okay, so what you're going to do when the U.S. government says you can't share your faith on the streets of America, you can't share with the government. Well, I get, I get, I get uh, army chaplains tell me, or military chaplains, I can't pray in the name of Jesus. I tell every chaplain, uh, yes, you can. Yeah. It may just cost you something. You may lose your job. It may cost you something. I mean, you can pray in the name of Jesus Christ, but it is not something. I mean, all these states now, remember, you, know, you can pray in front of the government buildings, you know, in front of the, the Congress, as long as you don't pray in the name of. Okay, but it's okay to do it in a lot. Right? Okay, or Buddha, or something like that. See, yeah, there's, there's the, only the biblical worldview, and the attack is on biblical Christianity. That's where this whole thing is going in the end of days, okay? Because I know the scriptures, I know where it's going. Well, then the lady wrote me, and she said in the email, she said, um, uh, how did she pray? I'm going to get this a little off, but she said, uh, I can't be as bold as him, or I want to be as bold as him. I emailed Mama back, her name is Kim. I emailed her back, I said, ma'am. Remember something, you can't get, you don't go to heaven and say, hey, Jesus, I'm here. My son was so bold for you. I'm so glad to be here. No, doesn't mama need to be bold as well? Mama needs to be bold. We were doing a conference in um, uh, Central Florida. We had a bunch of college kids, and we had adult leaders for the groups. And part of this afternoon session was go witnessing for two hours at a mall. We went to Red River Retreat Center, so we took off a bus and went to a mall. A mama told me, when she saw that on the... Uh, on the thing they were going to witness, and she was like, oh, I hope that's for the college kids and not for us adults. See, us adults are great leaders here as adults, right? Well, then she heard me speak. She said, I think I can do this. So she went to the mall on a bus with the kids. She walks in the mall, and she's praying for God to lead with somebody. She sees a mama there with two kids about the same age as what? Her two kids. That's exactly right. So she sits down, and she talks mama stuff. Okay, do you know, ladies know what I'm talking about? And I say mama stuff, okay? Because us guys have no clue what you're talking about. You ladies know what I'm talking about, don't you? Okay, you're talking kids stuff, and it's over my head. And they talk mama stuff for an hour. She throws a question out there. She talks over one full hour on the topic of God and Jesus Christ with this lady. When she came back to the camp, she told the story in front of everybody. You see all that sparkle in her eyes. Her eyes were big because she obeyed the Lord, right? He tells her to go out and preach the gospel. Preacher. She obeyed and she was excited and pumped up. Okay. So that's what I encouraged the mom with. I said, Great son, thanks for raising him that way. But mama, it's your job also to share your faith, right? Yeah, it's all of our jobs to do. Okay, let's pray as we do the second half of this one. Father, thank you so much for a good chance to just put all the pieces together, Father, that this is going to come together and be glorious to you with good tools. We thank you for it. We ask the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so this talk is called Reaching the Lost. Now, the number one is what? It's in your notes. Number one is what? You gotta have your what? A want to. If you have a want to, the rest is simple. Number two is what? Afraid to, okay? Uh, let the scriptures break through the fear of rejection for you. So in the book, One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven, there's a chapter called Winning, Winning, Winning. Help break through the fear of rejection. The book of Isaiah says, um, do not fear men who are going to die. Do not fear men who are going to die. Death is the great equalizer, right? Rich or poor, black or white, Canadian or American, we all die. We all go to the grave. The question is, where do you go after the grave? Right? Um, Carl, have you studied the uh, Hunger Games series? Have you do that in any of your talks a little bit? Is there death in those uh, movies, yes or no? Yeah, there's death because they're fighting over food or something like that at the end, right? It's a very big series with your kids. I'm in a church uh, and they're in a youth group team somebody or team somebody the different characters in there and he's got big cutout polygon cutouts that they're choosing the youth they're choosing which team they're going to be on i uh, just check the internet one of the associate directors assistant directors for that movie his son just shot and killed seven people at a college campus in california today okay so you're the assistant director of the hunger Games series you have millions of dollars in your pocket and your son now is a cold-blooded murderer okay and uh, they're talking now about this kid is mentally deranged and stuff. No, no, he's a sinner who needs a savior. So here's a dad and a mom. Are they going to wrestle now? They are going to wrestle now. All the millions in the world doesn't help you a nickel. Okay, when your son now, you're known as the guy who raised the kid who murdered seven people. Okay, but can't God use events just like this to reach those parents for Jesus Christ? Oh yeah. Can't He reach this son in prison now? 
Oh, yeah. We get, we get eight to ten letters a week to the ministry from prisoners for reading our book. So this is where we get a chance to read to There's seven people who just were on a college campus today. Eternity that quick. The question is, where are they on Google? Okay, so I don't need to be afraid. So number three is how to. So in your notes, number three is how to. Let's teach you a couple good questions. Um, and we're we'll going to do a little Q&A. Okay. Um, so good questions. Uh, remember, it's not a presentation. It's a what? Conversation. Conversation. A conversation. Okay, get that stuck in your head. I always have to remember that. Okay. Sometimes I'm talking to somebody, I get into complete presentation mode, and I need to switch to conversation mode, and then I go back and forth with that and do that. Okay. So get people on their favorite subject. What's their favorite subject? Jesus. No, no. Uh, to, when you're chatting, you're right. But I like that. He's their favorite subject should be Jesus, right? And for all eternity, our favorite subject is going to be what? Jesus. Even if you go to hell, your favorite subject is going to be what? Jesus. That's exactly right. Okay. But as we're chatting with the lost person out there, their favorite subject is what? Themselves. Themselves. Okay. So ask questions about this. Say, hey, where are you from? Okay. What do you do? Do you go to school? I ask younger people that all the time. So I just had a lady here working at the hotel. She said, yeah, I go to North Dakota State or whatever it is. And I said, what do you study? She said, psychology. That's interesting. Okay. Why did you choose that field? What do you want to do with it? See, I let that be my walk where I'm going to go. Okay. Um, good question to ask people. If you could have any job on planet Earth and money wasn't the issue, what would you do? That's a great question. I use it all the time. If you could have any job on planet Earth and money wasn't the issue, what would you do? That question cuts to the chase. You find out what's important to somebody very quickly. Okay. Here's another good question. If you had two hours of free time, and you could do anything on planet Earth, what would you do? That's a great question. If you had two hours of free time, you could do anything on planet Earth, what would you do? That's where someone sits there and you can see the wheels spinning for them. Okay, what they would do, because if you had two hours, you could do anything. Would you watch one of these movies Carl was talking about? Would you go play nine holes of golf? Would you hang out with your grandkids? What would you do if you had two hours? I, I, I can answer that easy. I would do what? I would talk to a lost person about Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'd love two hours of that. That'd be fun for me. Yeah, I, I just enjoy that so much. And do that to give and take with somebody. Go to a college campus and witness or something like that. Okay. So get the questions on themselves and do that, right? Um, here's some good starter questions. I'm going to teach you about three or four good starter questions, okay? And what you want is um, just a question that will open up to get you into the spiritual side, okay? So, so if something doesn't open up in the Indianapolis airport recently, and I started talking to two people that were Jewish people that had their yarmulkes on. And I said, uh, where are y'all coming from? And they said, oh, uh, my father died, I think so, he was this other boy, he was his granddad. So they're coming from a funeral. Okay, is that pretty easy to chat with someone about Jesus Christ? Yeah, it's pretty simple if you do that, okay? So, I, so if, if there's an event happening in their life, I let that, well, if I don't, then I just create the door that I make, that I open up the door. Sometimes the door just opens for you, other times I just open up. Okay, so here's a good question. If you die tonight, I was wondering to say, are you 100% assured to go to heaven? Okay, so sometimes I ask people this, and this is a good thing to write in your notes. Hey, can I ask you an interesting question? I use it all the time. Anybody on the play? Hey, can I ask you an interesting question? What's everybody say? Sure, what do you got? Okay, who, who doesn't like an interesting question? I love interesting questions. Okay, so I just sometimes, before I go to the serious question, hey, can I ask you an interesting question? They go, sure, what do you got? And so this is when you can use it. If you die tonight, are you 100% assured to go to heaven? Now, is it possible the person you're chatting with could die Could die today, yes or no? Yes. Sure it is. Those college kids just found out. Okay. Um, the question is, though, if I do die today, where do I go as my soul exits this body and do that? Okay. Um, did anybody try that question at once today? Anyone try that question with somebody? How did it, how did it go when you tried this? What did they say? We're practicing anger. We don't need that kind of stuff. We're practicing Anglican. We don't need that kind of stuff. How did you respond to them? I didn't have they didn't walk away. Oh, they walked away. Okay, now that's that's why that's a good question. What did the rich young ruler do with Jesus talking to him? He what? Walked away. walked away. But you don't know if he ever walked back. Um, the story is in I think the book of Watchmen, the man told me one day. Um, I asked the question to a man smoking a cigarette outside of a hotel in Wichita Falls, Texas. I said, sir, if you die tonight, are you 100% assured you go to heaven? 
He said, uh, yes, I am. So if you ever get yes to that, I have to say, well, how do you know that to be true? Right? How do you know that to be true, that you're going to? Because they give you yes for the wrong reasons, right? He said, boom, I, I, Jesus Christ, I commit my life to Christ. And he just starts preaching things, okay? I said, do you like to read? Yep, so I signed the one thing you can't do in heaven. I shake his hand. I said, I got to get to this speaking event. I was doing a youth event in Worcester Hall. I got to go. And he said, wait, before you go, can I say something to you? I said, sure. He said, 13 years ago, my boss uh, asked me the question at work, if you die tonight, are you 100% sure to go to heaven? Okay? He said, hey, man, thank you. Not interested, but appreciate it. One of those type things, right? He said, then he said, okay, if you're ever interested, just let me know. And uh, come back, let me know. And uh, so he walked away. I believe that the number is three. It might be two, but three years later, he knocked on his boss's door. He said, hey, can I come in? Sure, you man, have a seat, guy. Have a seat. I know what you want. He said, can I challenge you? I know what you want to talk about. Have a seat. He said, what do I want to talk about? I said, what do I talk about, Jesus? I totally understand. Have a seat. Okay. But his boss, he said, do you remember when you asked me the question, if I die tonight, am I 100% sure I'm going to that? He said, yeah. He says, sir, I just want to tell you, I thought about that question for every single day for three straight years. Okay? I need to know what it takes to get saved. So even though he walked away, walking away is not always a bad thing. Uh, we have a buddy in Atlanta. This is a good thing for you. Um, what he does, and I actually read this in the evangelism book, what he does, he has something on his schedule every week where he goes witnessing. Okay? So like Carl and I, we travel all the time, so I can't put something consistent. Like every Saturday morning, we have a buddy in Pittsburgh, Dr. John. Every Saturday morning, he's at a flea market, has a booth out there, and he shares Jesus Christ with people every Saturday morning. So it's hard on his schedule. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Okay. So you do door to door every Monday night. It's just hard on your schedule. It's not going to change. A buddy of mine in Atlanta, every Tuesday night, 6 to 9 o'clock, five points downtown Atlanta, him and his group witness every single Tuesday night. There. Okay. It's a, it's a kind of a crossroads area of downtown Atlanta. And so if you want to meet up with him, I send people down. But he's always, it's on his schedule. It never changes. You see? So that way it keeps it being part of your life. Isn't it? We get busy and all of a sudden the witnessing slides off our schedule. I just witness wherever I'm at, so it never slides off my schedule. That's a good, I like it, it's a very good idea. He told me the other day, they're talking to this homosexual guy, and he starts sharing biblical truth with him. And that homosexual guy walked away from 30, 40 feet away. Stood there, you could see he was thinking. Did a U-turn and came back. Talked some more, walked away. Thinking, did what? Came back six different times. That man walked away, and six different times he what? Came back to talk to those guys. He knew he was hearing truth, but he had to wrestle with it a little bit before he had to process and then come back. So again, when someone walks away, I don't worry about it. Okay, but you never know if they're going to walk back. Okay. Who else? You all tried that question today. What response did you get? Yes, I talked to a young couple that were standing outside our hotel. And I asked the question, and the girl said, he will, but I won't. Oh, wow. She asked the question, and the girl said, he will go to heaven, but I won't. But okay. he was he was a Spanish-speaking and an English-speaking young man, and he was very sweet and shy, kind of, and he just shook his head, like, no. He's, like he was no. And so... Uh, uh, we talked a little bit about what the Bible says about all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Good. and what we could do about it. Good. And so I got a chance, Doctor, the girl came back, she went away for a few minutes and she came back. And anyway, I gave them one of your books and he wanted, gave them each one. Good. And they said they would read it and they asked, I said, do you want us to pray for you? And they said yes. And the boy's name is Pedro Luna, and her name is Dina. Wow. And they want us to pray for them. Now, when, when a lot of times I'm out on the streets, and I, people, people will sometimes say to me, um, would you pray for me? Okay. Or um, sometimes I'll ask them at the end, is there anything we can pray for you at the end? But when they say yes to that and they give you something, where should you pray for them at? Right there. Did you pray for him right there? Okay. This is something I learned because I found out I go through days at a music festival and I would get tired. 
and I can forgive certain encounters, and I made a commitment, I prayed for myself. I finally figured out, Mark, if you pray for them right there, then you don't have to worry about later when you're tired of you, okay? And I tell a story in the book, One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven. I did this with a, a Mohawk tattooed up teenage boy who said he was 17 in Denver, Colorado, sitting on the bus bench. The story's out of control. It's just totally out of control what happened. Um, I said, let's pray. I put a hand on his shoulder, began to pray for him. And when we finished, he put his head up and he had tears in his eyes. He said, man, he said, I haven't done that in a long time. That was his response. And remember, many people have never heard their name taken to the throne of God. Right? So do it right there for them. To do it is take their name to the throne of God right in front of them. That means a lot for people because they hear your heart coming through, how much you care for them. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, the other thing that's interesting there is the girl thought he would go to heaven. And he said, to her, okay, because what does she see? She probably thinks he's a what? Good person. And you're saying we've all sinned and he knows himself better. And he's like, no way at all. Okay. So think about how we look at people. And that's, again, why we don't compare, I wrote this in one of the books, we don't compare ourselves horizontally to people. We have to compare vertically to God. And God says, be ye holy as I am holy. Guess what? I'm not holy. Okay? But you have to have no sin to get there. And I've got a problem. But we got the grandest solution that's ever been given to a problem, don't we? Yes, we do. The Lord Jesus Christ will give us that. Okay? And that's why that's a great question. This cuts to the chase. Um, I was going through, uh, do you have toll booths up here? Do you have toll booths in uh, North Dakota? One toll booth. Do you have toll booths in Canada? You go through and pay a toll to get on the road. Well, I'm moving up to Galway, and uh, oh, it's cold. I forgot. Sorry. I won't do that. And uh, the uh, but on the East Coast, a lot of tolls. I'm, I'm going to Maryland this week, so I'm flying to Philadelphia, and I'm cutting through uh, Delaware. And there's toll booths everywhere. So I just told her. I said, "Hey, how you doing?" She said, "Good." I said, uh, "How much do you should tell you?" She said, "Can I ask you an interesting question?" She said, "Yeah." I said, "If you die tonight, are you 100 percent assured you go to heaven?" She said, "No." I said, "Even if it's a head?" She said, "Yeah." Okay, see the first problem. She believes there's a heaven, but she doesn't she doesn't think she's going there. Wait a minute. If you believe there's a heaven or not, wouldn't you think she would be doing anything it took to get there? If it was a million good works or whatever it is, you would make sure you got that check off the list, okay? I said, if you were the case to get there, she said, No, I don't said it was real simple. The game was explaining it to me. And as I'm talking to her, she takes a sunglass off, puts the sunglass on top of her head so she can stare at my eyes. Now, one good thing on the street, but on the street, there were hats and there were sunglasses. Because people need to see your eyes. Okay? Because they can tell you mean what you're talking about by looking at your eyes. Okay? Matter of fact, when I'm talking to lost people, sometimes they're going to say, yeah, I'm not interested with their eyes, and keep talking. Keep talking. And so, yeah, everything else. Okay? I'll look through their glass. I'll look through their glass. I'll look through their glass. I'll see their eyes. Sometimes their eyes are just screwed just dead into you, or they're soaking in all. Does that make sense? Okay? And so she's good. I look in the rear view mirror and no cars came into my hole. Like none. It's just like a guy put an angle in the hell talk for this. Okay, this ended right here. Uh, Carl and I had a great talk with uh, Laurel, our waitress today. Uh, Laura, our waitress today. And um, uh, check if you pulled up a chair and sat at our table. Okay, because it's really slow to rest. Maybe they tagged it. I guess they wanted to get away or something. She said, so you really just tagged it. You know, yeah, I'm nice to meet you. Know, so she sat at our table, chit chatted. Um, her aunt died. Uh, lap band surgery. They went in to take the lap band and they cut the aorta. And her aunt died, 47, led to death. But her aunt worked for a Christian radio station, like Grand Forks or something around here or something. So there's been like a little bunch of things on the back of cars. And if that's her, that's her. And this is her niece. And so they've been talking about her on the radio station. She told me, I can't remember the name now. And uh, there's a bumper sticker that died or something. We got to talk with these to, to make sure she knew what Jesus Christ what is true biblical salvation. Uh, she grew up Lutheran. Can you grow Lutheran in back of Philadelphia? Yeah. Can you grow up uh, Baptist back of Philadelphia? Yeah. yeah. I really don't. I, I, I was at the All Boys Catholic School and um, the boys said, uh, here's my, let's go to heaven. I said, when you get to heaven, I said, if you get to heaven, if you get to heaven, um, you will not have a big C on your chest for Catholic, a big D for Baptist, a big N for Baptist. You have a big J for Jesus on your chest because all your sins are washed by the blood of Christ. So you shall not be there. Okay? Isn't it amazing? You have to take what you're religious. Think about it. I'm not Baptist. I'm Presbyterian. Well, where's that in the scriptures? 
you are born again, say, or you're not. That's it. Two categories, lost and say, lost. That's it. There's only two categories. They're very simple. You've got to keep it simple to search. Does that make sense? Keep it simple with people too. That's why that's a great question. Okay? Um, good question. Uh, when you die, what do you think is on the other side? Uh, what do you think is out there when you walk out here? So that's a good question. So when you die, what do you think is on the other side? What do you think is out when you walk out here? Now, I like that question more so than the other one because that's open ended. Okay. You're, you're not going to get a yes or no to this. So when you die, what do you think is on the other side? What do you think is out there uh, when you walk out of here? Okay. So uh, that question, um, a, a lot of times I lose a little survey approach. So if you're sitting out in the house in a bar section of town and you see me on a college campus with Notre Dame, and I walk with a little yellow stick pad in my hand. Okay. I walk with people and say, hey, I enjoy it. I said, can you help me out working on a project? What's everybody say? Sure, we got okay. I don't walk up with a big clipboard, okay? I don't say, hey, come in the survey. It's got a bad invitation to it. Hey, I'm working on a car with this. Sure. I said, and ask the question, when you die, what do you think is on the other side? What do you think is out when you walk out of here? Okay? I think lots of people have love that question. Okay, what do you think? They give you an answer. It's a lot of them. Uh, heaven and hell, heaven and hell, nothing. Reincarnation, unsure of the right life. Okay, aliens about the college team. What are we teaching our kids, by the way? And uh, so you just mark down, say, hey, why do you believe that? I think when you're in a conversation, live through that sentence, okay? And you never start a conversation on a lie. Um, I feel like they have asked you why you're doing it. I feel like they have talked like all the time, folks, all right? Um, give yourself an assignment. Uh, give yourself your Sunday school class, whatever you personally assign, you're going to talk to 10 people a week about spiritual. So, hey, why do you do this? I start Sunday school, and we're talking to 10 people about spiritual. You're helping me do my project. Thank you so much. Okay? And that's just raise the eyes and keep on chatting with people. It's a little survey approach, but it's really well. It should cut you right to the chase real quick to do that. Uh, that's the question asked Michael Jordan. Michael, when you die, what do you think is on the other side? What do you think is out there when you walk out of here? And uh, the story is for you, the one thing you can't pretend to win. Uh, that's the question asked Tiger Woods. I walked on the golf course with Tiger Woods. And I said, Tiger, I always ask you a question. He said, go for it. I said, Tiger, it's when you die. What do you think is on the other side? What do you think about when you walk out of here? He literally stopped dead square in his tracks, stared at me and said, I don't know. And Tiger Woods and I had a 10 or 12 minute conversation and talked it about. Okay, just by throwing that question out there. And the story is for you and don't want to get away with it. Okay? Why? That question makes people think. Right? It's a great question. I don't care who you are, everybody thinks about that. They think about it somehow, somewhere, okay? But as I think about it, okay, what, how do I come to the conclusion of what it's going to be? Okay, how do I figure that out? So that's what I have to do. Okay, so a little survey approach, real simple. Right? Um, uh, three good questions for you. Know, three good questions for you. Uh, one, who is God? Two, who is Jesus? And three, what is salvation? One, who is God? Two, who is Jesus? Three, what is salvation? Okay, those are three great questions to ask anybody in any conversation. One, who is God? Two, who is Jesus? Three, what is salvation? So if you get a wrong answer to any one of those, that's your door you walk at that moment as you're witnessing someone. Okay? Um, so I actually learned this from a friend of mine. She's a former Mormon. Okay? And she was in, um, uh, she was, she was Finnish. And she was translating, uh, the secret documents into the Finnish. Okay? So she's translating the Finnish. But at the same time, she happened to be reading another book at the same time. What book was she reading? The Holy Bible. Exactly right. And she was reading stuff. She said, That's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. She told us, I need to search this out. So she began to search this out, okay, and she realized that the Mormon teachings did not like the Bible. Repent of her sins, God born again to say. Her husband um, was a state president in Mormon, very high up food chain, okay? Saw what happened, wrote. he began to search out. He realized it was wrong, repented of the sin, and God born again to say. Okay? They want to reach Mormons for Jesus Christ. They moved to where? Where are you from? Salt Lake City. Their ministry was right in the middle of Salt Lake City, and they helped more Mormons get out of that false teaching to the truth. And this is what she. Um, so she always says, who is God, who is Jesus, what is salvation?
operation. Okay, so when you get those, it's using all the common forms. Okay, to cut to the chase. So we're talking because you can use the same word to get a different definition to the word. You see, that's the danger. Okay, so you got to find it to the same thing. So up here in the uh, Fargo area, would you have um, uh, more Mormon or Jehovah's Witnesses? Which one would you have? That's you. I'm going to no, 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 I know there's probably more Lutherans than either one of those. I'm talking about like, like, I'm going to teach you how to use these questions. So, do you have, do you have more Mormons, more Mormons, witnesses? What, what cultish things do you have? Jehovah's Witnesses, okay. So, Jehovah's Witnesses not on your door, should you the door, yes or no? Yes or Yes or no? Of course. Of course, I am the least bit concerned, okay, about you changing your mind. I am much more concerned about people that they see in your life. Okay, but you have something wrong. Okay, now, so uh, I asked the uh, Jehovah's Witness, who is God? Now, the dead giveaway you're talking to Jehovah's Witness, when you say, who is God, they're going to have a certain word in the back of your direction. What's that, what's that word? Jehovah. Okay, you're the only group that basically uses Jehovah. So if you're going to say Jehovah in a conversation, you're about rest assured you're going to talk to Jehovah's Witness at that time. Now, as they describe God, it's going to sound biblically okay, but it's going to be a big problem in just a second. Okay? So then you have the question, who is Jesus? All right, so someone raise their hand. If you talk to the Holy Witness, um, how will they describe Jesus Christ? How will they describe Jesus Christ? Anyone out there? How are they? With a big thing. Okay, Son of God. Interesting. Hold that thought, okay? I heard over here. Created. Okay, the created being, very interesting, okay? An angel, they believe, is the archangel Michael, okay, who is, became Jesus Christ, right? Uh, now, when you hear that he's a brother to the devil, or a brother, a spirit brother of Lucifer, that's the world of Lucifer. That's more interesting, okay? That's more interesting, okay? And uh, so they believe in Jesus, but they believe he was a created being. Okay, now we know from this is good for your notes uh, John chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, and Hebrews chapter 1. John chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, and Hebrews chapter 1, it actually names the creator of everything. What's his name? It's Jesus. John chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, Hebrews. It actually named Jesus the creator of all. So if he's the creator of all, he can't be a Created me. That's exactly right. Okay, so they're going to say he's created. So that shows you right there that the one thing they don't believe in is the what? The Trinity. Okay, so now it's not the same God that we believe in, but you wouldn't know what to say. The question is going to sound okay. They don't believe in the Trinity. And then again, every, when it comes to what is salvation, every religious system will come down to what? Works. Okay. I was talking about John, 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 I said, why do you wear your cross? And she said, yeah. is this this work? Jay, Jay, so you do it. I mean, I don't want to talk to you. This is 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 this so, so, uh, I don't know. So, so, uh, I don't know. So, so, uh, I don't know. So, so, 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 I don't know. Okay, we we got um, the beautiful work of Christ down there. Right? Uh, uh, this is the jewel we're talking about. Sad, 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 s
didn't have that one. Uh, you, you get it. So if you're watching that uh, uh, three weeks, I would have ever heard my mom. So if you're three weeks, you're sure. Different things. Look at the way we get in conversation with these people. And do that. Uh, 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 tattoos. 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 Okay, get in on the I'm in the manager area about that law community of this society. And I know there's this wine bar on 884. That's not something that's sitting in there. I'm going to put it on that. This is a big thing. So I'm going to do the law. 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 Okay. So your eyes are dead, you nod your head, you smile, or something like that. I keep going, oh, that's not something that they do. This is just some kind of great thing. Your eyes are dead. I said, hey, 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 what's up, dude? I said, 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 what's up, dude? Can you, you walk into my life? Like, I'm not going to talk about this. Sure. So we're supposed to walk into this life. And he says, can I ask you a question? Remember the conversation? Go for it. I said, sure. sure. He says, how, how did you get me out of everybody in the airport? That's what he says. How did you get me out of everybody in the airport? I said, one of the truths is that if you just look at the interest rate, and I said, I, I like you, Mr. Speaker. Look at it. He looks like, I am so lost. I am so lost. He was 30 years old, muscles up, hands in the back. You thought he had everything. And he had absolutely what? Nothing. All over the world. I like it. I gave him a heart for the way. He shook your hands. I love you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks a lot for the conversation. Sure, sure. Can you do that? Can you get into my conversation and do that? The the um the risk is there. Five five risk is there. Five five house. Um, look look at those. Ask them what the risk is there. Okay. Um, uh, the lizard can't answer correctly. Okay. Um, can't answer. That means somebody may have cancer or something has died. You can use that as a way to get into the data. Over fifty percent of the data is that you can't have to do that. I'm not very big on time. I'm just curious about what we're doing. Okay. 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 And so, so this is a friend of mine in high school uh, that got into suicide. suicide. This is a friend of mine in high school, school. when I'm not college, college. I'm just spring break right before the board. I don't know what it's about out in the eye. But this was one's work. Okay, okay. okay. we talked about life and death yesterday. It could have been any sense of the law. It's not as bad. Hey, what are you listening for and things like that? I was in, um, um, yeah, man, it's a weird word. I was in, um, She was just so much more just this, and she was giving me this bubble bath, and she was giving me this big, big smile. 
Because the Bible says the law is written on your heart. 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 This is a business question. 
Okay, we're, we're saying, saying that because of the common government, government so it's so true, true, hard, 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 hard,
her, her other brother is not. I think he's walking walk walk into Jesus Christ. Christ. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't believe God. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't believe the Bible. We've been on the internet, internet like crazy, crazy, crazy stupid video, video, video that people created, created to try to find a hole in God. 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 She, she, she knows me how many times my brother died by his truth. Okay, okay. Well, she needs that information, right? We haven't had that information yet. Okay, okay. Uh, your name is Jerry, Jerry, right? Jerry, Jerry, stand up for us. Where are you today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry, Jerry. This is Jerry. Where are you from? Where are you from, Jerry? Hey, do you have the microphone? Can we get a little bit quick? Jerry, Jerry. You live on the farm. What do you farm over there? Well, well, uh, 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 I got much much and some so 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 they say, say, you can get it, and they get it, and they get it, so, so, every boy, man, 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 two out, two out, every day, every day, every day, you drove, drove, you're all, 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 you yeah, yeah. And you can use these out of your own. Keep going, keep going. Okay, okay. okay. And I said, I had a pack of money. I was in the 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 I was in
you don't want him to embarrass him, embarrass him. But if you, you, you don't take that ball, ball and get out and of your drive, spend hours, 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 hours of play, right. practice, right. practice, practice, and you can not shoot a basket. Witnessing the same way. You can listen to the same way. You can all day long. Take it, take it, go up. Practice, practice, put it into, 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 Good rest, good rest, and rest, 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 rest here, here, and uh, in Argo, Argo, we're here in Minnesota, so we're so here in Canada. 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 Like to do your business, business, your work, your work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Soul, soul, maybe, maybe, maybe. Has the has the case, 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 the Love the love Bible, 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 read, Bible, read Bible, the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, pass it on, pass it on to the ones that want to make sure this is what that's fine. We think, we think, we ask, 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 we're going to be we're down, down, down here, here at Southern Sunday tonight. We're going to give you, we'll give you a pretty long, pretty long time, time, time to go out, go out, and have a chance to see this vision and missionary. So, uh, uh, one final one feedback, 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 feedback,